All right, 30 teams, 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit every NBA team before the season starts. On this episode, we're going to go ahead and break down the Indiana Pacers. Indiana Pacers, I guess this season, I mean, to really boil it down is Victor Oladipo. Can Victor Oladipo get back to where he was before he suffered that injury? Um, and even before he suffered that injury, there were some concerns that it was just a hot start and people had uh, begun to question whether he had begun to fade uh, before he got injured. So uh, Victor Oladipo in the offseason said that he wanted to return to Indiana. He's on a one-year deal and was going to push his way uh, for a trade. Um, I have not really watched. I haven't really watched too much of um, Vic, but um, since the injury, as far as Pacers games, a lot of the games that I've watched, he hasn't played. I did watch a little bit of him in the bubble, and he was obviously not the same guy. But the situation in the bubble was tricky because he had stated that he was too injured to play, and then I think that he got around his teammates and wanted to play for them, but. Um, he obviously wasn't 100%, so I, I can't really hold that against him um, as a player. So it'd just be interesting to see if he can get back to that form, because at that form, he was an all-NBA guard, uh, you know, up there as a top 15, 12 player. Very aggressive downhill, uh, combo guard. You can get a little bit of the one, shooting it well at a high clip, u um, uber explosive. So if he can get back to that form, um, definitely Indiana has a chance. I mean, this team is much better than the team that uh, he dominated um, on before he got uh, injured. You have Malcolm Brogdon, who I still do not understand why. Milwaukee let go. A good um, question for a Bucks fan is, would you rather have Malcolm Brogdon uh, in all your picks than – Crew Holiday, who I think is a fantastic player as well. But Malcolm Brogdon, if you remember back in that Toronto series, he was the one that was primarily guarding Kawhi Leonard. Uh, he was the one that was hitting shots. He was their most reliable player other than Giannis in that series. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> they went cheap. And they didn't, uh, they didn't resign him. And they traded him for picks. And I just don't see as a team – in that market, why you're trading away picks, why you're trading away talent, you know, and a lot is always made on players, uh, players' responsibilities to the team. And, um, hey, players should resign. And remember Charles Barkley said, hey, you should stay uh, loyal to the Bucks and don't be a chump. But, uh, you know, it's never talked about the teams, but their responsibilities are to the players. And you had a situation uh, that I, uh, you know, recall um, in Miami when Miami had the opportunity to draft a player in the first round and then they sold the pick and then traded Mike Miller because uh, they didn't want to pay the luxury tax. And then their final season of the big three era, the Heatles era, um, when they're playing the Spurs in the finals, they have six players, six functional players that they could play. I remember that uh, draft, a lot of uh, draft uh, mocks had them taking uh, Draymond Green. Draymond Green would have felt like a glove on that team. Uh, but again, you have owners going cheap and then they're coming back to bite them. I just don't see how you're letting assets go. Why are you letting assets walk out the door? Um, it just it doesn't really make sense to me. They could have traded. They could have had the team that they have now traded for Crew Holiday and been in a completely different space uh, with Crew and Malcolm Brogdon and uh, – with Crew, Malcolm Brogdon, and uh, uh, excuse me, Crew, Malcolm Brogdon, and uh, Middleton. Uh, now you would be paying over the cap, but that would be a better team. That would be a serious team for you to deal with. So um, I just don't, I just don't think that. Uh, I just don't think that uh, uh, the Bucks were well served by that trade. But just going back to the Pacers, so. You have uh, Victor Oladipo um, that I talked about, uh, T.J. Warren, who caught fire in the bubble, uh, who looked like <laughs> a cross between, uh, I don't even know what to describe it. He was hitting threes at a rate. 
um, that I've never seen from him before, and he's cooled off. Uh, but I think he's an interesting player, interesting scorer. That was a very astute trade that they made for him. And i um, interested to see how he plays when you have a more ball-dominant player and Victor Oladipo on the court full-time. Another player that is of interest to me is uh, Sabonis. Uh, he's taken off. Obviously, that was a home run trade, uh, Paul George for Sabonis and uh, Victor Oladipo. And Sabonis might end up being the best player out of all of them. Um, I, I think that's not a crazy statement. Maybe it might sound crazy to people out there, but I think he can be a dominant, dominant, dominant big. I watched him play Philadelphia the other night, and was it Philly? Yeah, it was Philadelphia. And I don't know if it's me or did he get taller? Um, because he looked like he was, uh, you know, much taller than Dwight. And I know Dwight's not a seven footer. He's listed at six ten, but he looks like he's much taller. But as a player, he's very aggressive, very skilled. Um, you know, if you remember his dad at all, if you're an old head like me, um, and you know, he was a very skilled passer. He was one of the first uh, <laughs> shooting big men in the league that could the center that could shoot threes. Him and Sam Perkins that I remember, and even predating me, his dad was said to be, you know, one of the top five centers of all time. Say when they US team team USA went down there to play them, you know, he kicked Ralph Sampson's ass. That's that's what the story is. So um you know, so he obviously has the pedigree of a great player and I think that he um is someone that could definitely take a leap and become like most improved player in the league type player like I think he has another jump in him he was an all-star last year I think he can get to that top 20 discussion this year I think he's that skilled I'm a big fan of his game his aggression you know he was going back and forth uh with Dwight uh that game didn't back down at all um I think that he's hungry and he wants to be a, a better player so that leaves the conundrum that they've had for a while which is Miles Turner uh, you know, they, they had that failed attempt to try to get Gordon Hayward this offseason. Uh, they couldn't come to a deal. I guess uh, Boston didn't want Miles Turner. Miles Turner, uh, I think, lost a lot of shine in people's eyes over the past couple of years. And then this uh, postseason run versus the Heat kind of um, settled that score and sunk in for everyone that he's just not the player that a lot of people uh, thought he was. Uh, there was uh, a lot of mismatches that he had in that series that he did not take advantage of all. I think they guarded him with Duncan Robinson at times. And I, I've seen him go down on the box and score over other players. I don't know if it was a mental thing or if he just can't do it on a consistent play basis. But, you know, you think that he would be able to attack those type of switches. But I also think that's part of the NBA gameplay now is that teams are so um, – three and D focus that they don't like to throw it into paint for obvious post touches when there's mismatches. And I think that that team should do that more. You know, that's just a, a, a place that teams are not attacking more. And I think that if you're a smart team, that's a good place to get layups and fouls and teams in early foul trouble. And I think they should do it more, but you know, his stock has fallen. There was always a concern of how he fit next to Sabonis and which one that you would kick. I think Sabonis has obviously answered that question. I still think that he's a valuable player. Hopefully he improves on his game, stops taking as many long twos, focuses on shooting threes and attacking mismatches. 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 I don't know what the hell's going on with me today. Hot mouth, but focus on shooting threes and attacking mismatches. Uh, I think that uh, is key for him. He's a very athletic player. I've seen him do some things off the bounce as well. You know, pump and go situations. There's a place, there's room for him to be a, a really good player. And then he's a great defender. He's a good help side defender. He's a little bit slight. So he struggles with the Joel beads, the Jokic's, um, players of that ilk. But um, just by me counting, you can see there's not that many players like him. So I think that, uh, you know, he can affect things in a defensive way, uh, similar to a Bam Adebayo. So it just depends on what he wants to be offensively, if he's locked in enough that he wants to make those changes. Um, so that'll be 
uh, something that I'm looking out for. Uh, when I'm looking at their roster, let me bring up their roster right now. Um, I know that they have the holiday kid who looks aggressive, looks like he wants to score. Uh, they have the Bidaza kid that they drafted a couple years back, which is another reason probably to trade Miles Turner to see what he has. He seems like an aggressive player, a, a bruiser. Um, I don't know, maybe the fit isn't as clean next to Sabonis as Turner's is, and we just talked about how Turner's is kind of jumbled. So that would be an interesting thing and a subplot that I would like to see. Uh, they got Dougie McBuckets. They have Lamb, who they've had for a couple of years, who's actually shown some things on this team as a starter in Oladipo stead. So we'll see uh, what he does as a bench player. Um, they have the Cassius Stanley that they drafted out of uh, Duke, who really didn't show me anything. But, I mean, it's, there's still opportunities for him. And I believe they have the other Holiday. Yeah, so they have two Holiday brothers. So, you know, Justin has shown himself to be a solid player, solid defender. Uh, you know, Aaron has uh, some more game, some more bounce to him, smaller guard. So this is an interesting team. Uh, I think a lot of people are down on them. Um, and I, but I think that can snap back really quickly if Oladipo, um, you know, takes a step forward. Uh, the coaching change, I forget who did they bring in at the coach. They brought in a first time coach. Who was their coach? Nate Borgen. Nate Borgen. Borgen. Or whatever. So they fired Nate McMillan. I remember when I heard on an NBA podcast that there was some friction there between him and management. I thought he had done a, a good job, but they fired him and went a different direction. I just lamented on a few uh, of these uh, season previews that I think that the NBA has a does a bad job, just like every sporting league, of recycling coaches and not giving young coaches a chance. No, I didn't think that Nate McMillan had done anything to warrant him getting fired, but sometimes you just run afoul of management, run afoul of your general manager, and it's time to move on. I don't know what the, the backstory is there, but see what this Nate Borgen got. You know, you never know if, you know, you you get a coach and he becomes a, a uh, he, he becomes a uh, Stevens on the Celtics or he becomes the Raptors head coach, he becomes uh, Miami's head coach. Um, you know, these are all, you know, guys, you know, who on their first opportunity uh, hit it directly out of the park. So maybe uh, the Pacers have that here. So uh, most impactful player, most impactful player is definitely, 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 definitely Victor Oladipo. If he takes that leap and he ascends again and he gets back to where he was pre-injury, then they're a problem. They're a top four or five seed and they're a problem and a team that nobody wants to play uh, in the first round. And then uh, the most intriguing player would have to be Sabonis, you know, um, you know, and they have other young players who probably have more interest to people, but if Sabonis does have that leap and then another leap in him and then Oladipo gets back, then you're cooking with gas. Then you have a pathway to be, you know, a top three team and give every team out East a problem. I don't. I wouldn't say that they would be the favorites even in that scenario, but they could give every team out east a problem and a and a turn ankle here and a shooting barrage from T.J. Warren there. They could they could potentially get to the NBA finals. Uh, so that is the Indiana Pacers. Thirty teams, thirty minutes. Like I said, I'm going to do every team before the season starts. I'm going to give every team love while the season is going on. So definitely hit subscribe if you have any comments, questions, you disagree with anything that I said, and you are wrong, and you want me to explain to you why you're wrong, and why you shouldn't disagree with me. Go ahead and leave me a comment, and I will answer all of them. NBA, thirty teams, thirty minutes. Get at me.